All right, here we go. We've got the man Slothy in the house. How you doing? Yo, yo, it's your boy Slothy. It's your girlfriend's favourite, and we're here to do an interview with the lesson. Let's go. Now, you're, um, you're in Adelaide. Uh, yeah, we for... are. We're in Adelaide right now. I drove here today. We left at 5.20 in the morning. Had a nap before this interview. I had to, bro. Like, then I was running on, like, what, two, three hours sleep? Now, um... I mean, we, this happened pretty quick. Uh, yeah, you you know, shout out to Sam. He teed it up online and then we got on the phone, yep. had a couple of chats and here we are. Now, this is your first time in South Australia? Or? No, this is my second. Oh, second this is your time. second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've, um, this is my second time here. Okay, so this is your second time in Adelaide. Yep. Um, now, before we get into all the music... Yep. Uh, Hit me. For those who don't know, you know, you do, I mean, you, you sounds like you do a lot of stuff, yep. production, engineering, um, some of the names you work with, 360, Melbourne, Wombat, Rates, Little Snow, the list goes on and on. Yep. Um, now, I think you got into the, the whole music production thing around 2014? Uh, roughly about eight years ago. Um, I'm 31 right now. Um, I started off, yeah, about eight years ago. So whatever time that was, to be honest, I have no idea. Now, before <laughs> before you started, you know, getting into the music thing, what were you doing before that? I was just stuff. <laughs> just stuff, eh? Stuff. stuff and things, eh? You know what I'm saying? Um, I've been, uh, music's been a part of my life, like, in and out. Like, um, I came to this country with nothing but, like, my bass guitar and a suitcase and grew from there. Um, and um, I left music for years until I, um, you know, I got kicked out of school and shit and had to find my way around my life. And then um, eventually I fell back into music and um, I started doing music full time and that's when it became a thing, you know. So when you talk about um, coming here uh, from another country, you're from Argentina? Yes. And so you were how old when you came to Australia? Australia. And what brought you to Australia? Um, uh, a future. Dead as I looked at my mother and I'm like, I'm not fucking selling tires at the back of a fucking garage, bro. Like, dead as like, I need, we need, we need to do something. Like, we need to get out of here. Like, I actually convinced my mother to move to a, to Australia when I was like 13 years old. I'm like, I'm, I'm not like, there's, there's no future for us here. Um, you like, you're overly qualified. My mom's like, uh, my mom's a lecturer. She's got a doctorate degree. She's fucking. She's got so many uh, university degrees and all that. She works at Melbourne University and everything now as well. So um, we, um, uh, she told me I was crazy. She told me I was stupid. And then uh, like maybe like 10 months later, she's like, you know what? You're right. Let's get the fuck out of here. So we did and we took a gamble. We came here with an open visa um, so we could return if we wanted to. And um, we, we ended up staying. Like she, she, um, she worked her way through here. I worked my way through school till obviously I got kicked out and did, started doing my dumb shit, you know, like we all learn. And um, yeah. So why did, you, why did you guys pick Australia in particular? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> it was just like Australia, like let's go to Australia. Like I was 13, man, I don't fucking know. Like I really don't know what was going through my head right, like, right then, like it's been like, so long um but yeah it was literally just like let's go to australia and she's like you're out of your freaking mind like what, what are you talking about like a 13 year old telling his mother like let's go to australia like what the fuck are you talking about bro like um but ended up working out so that's i guess that's it eh? and then when you talk about coming here with your mum, your pop no just my mum. and so was your pop around in your childhood you mean my or? dad yeah nah my dad's not around and he wasn't no. Nah. From, from day dot? No, nah, my dad left when I was three. Um, he called me when I was five. Um, I went back to Argentina to meet him when I was like 21. No comment. Um, I just left that there and I was just like, okay, I'll see you now. And I just, I just left. I, I don't really want to get into that side of things. But um, yeah, my, 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 my dad did some pretty bad things. Not to us, like just did some pretty bad things. So... Um, it wasn't, um, I have nothing against him, 
whatsoever. Like everybody lives their life however the fuck they want. You know what I mean? But like it was just like I, that, that that wasn't um, the 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 fatherhood I needed. You know what I'm saying? So then you you've you've come here at 13. Yep. At some point you've started getting into the dumb shit. <laughs> Um, and then I guess the music, when you got into the music around that 2014 period. Yeah. So like I worked in the mining industry, um, like, so I got kicked out of school. Um, I got kicked out of home and I managed to get myself into the mines earned really good money. I had a really bad lower back injury and I ended up on a wheelchair. Um, and then from that, I just didn't know what the fuck to do with myself. And I, I started doing drugs and, you know, doing a whole heap, like hanging around with the wrong people and all that. Like eventually I got back on my feet because I was, you know, on drugs. And um, um, I started writing music again because I was writing music from when I was younger. Like I learned uh, keyboard, guitar and bass. Um, and I started writing music again because to pass time and everything and I started getting good and then I started building my own setup and my own my own studio and um, it all became like it all started coming together after that. And then so when you're talking about like your early like the early stuff that you did yeah um, because you're Melbourne based yeah um, now Filthy Phil was he one of the first dudes from Melbourne that you were producing for yeah Phil Phil was uh, Phil was a sick cunt shout out Filthy Phil bro I swear to God I love you brother um, Phil Phil actually reached out to me and uh, um, bro funny as bro like he rocked up at my house at like 3am cooked out of his mind I'm like sick cunt like let's make some music hey and um, we produced his first EP, which was Five Sorts. Um, and that was back in the LMG days. So like, I was already like doing shit with like LMR and, L and um, LMG at LMG Studios with like Manazil and Grilly and all that. And um, then uh, that studio got demolished, um, no comment. But like, um, so I built my own setup and Phil hit me up and we went from there and we just started producing records. And then um, we, we're, very, we're very alike, me and him, and we, we flow very well making music together. So we, we just started making music and music and music and music. And um, after that, like, we just made a lot of noise, to be honest. Dribbles came through. Um, then greats came through and then it just started to get in more and more noise and uh, Next minute. I'm literally like I went from like, you know, writing my own raps to like, ah, oh, cool I'm producing now. So like uh, Rapping wasn't really my thing. Like it never was. I was always interested in the tech stuff like um, I like composition myself. So like I sit down and write a record instead of like rap it or whatever Like I still I sing I do choruses and all that blah blah, but um My my thing is tech so that I, I'm happy behind the desk And then so that release with Phil was 2014 um, Which one? The, there's so many The Five bro. Swords the first one that he did with you Five Swords EP Five Swords was hectic bro like we did that in like, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> like dead as it was just like some stupid ass nights. It was some stupid ass days. Um, we were young, we were, we were, but like the music's great. The music's absolutely great. And then, so yeah, two years later, uh, 2016, then you released, um, I think nine tracks, uh, nine track mixtape at Filth Bill, Dribbles, Bird Brain. Oh yeah, yeah. There's, there's. I started pumping out mixtapes with all the artists that I was working with. Um, so like, kind of like what DJ Khaled does and all the cats in in America. And it actually caught the attention of them. And um, shout out Monster and Bonafuku from um, St. Louis. They hit me up because like our sound got to St. Louis and Atlanta. And um, they flew me over there and they're like, yo, you guys are making noise. Like, let's do some shit. And that's when it all really, really begun. And I, I went over to, to St. Louis, Atlanta, Memphis. Um, I started producing with some of the greatest that there is in trap music. 
And I brought that back. I brought that back to the boys. And I'm like, yo, like, I got, I've got all the right shit to do it right now. I've got, like, they, these guys, like, trained, pretty much trained me. Like, they showed me all the ropes and everything, like Young Jinx, um, Sailor Blue, uh, Manager Mark, all them. Um, I went to uh, uh, Plug Life Studios, which is uh, one of 808 Mafia Studios, um, and um, the Temple Recording Studios, where they toured me. Um, around St. Louis and that's when they showed me all the ropes and um, I brought, like I said, I brought that back to the boys and that's when we kicked off and, and we started making Filthy Fills music bigger and we started making like all these mixtapes and started uh, sending them out to like that piff and that's when like the, the SP records, SP records began, like SP records became like not just like me as a sloth production, it became like, you know, uh, just a, a small record label that actually like produced for like so many artists and all that. And we started putting record like albums together and mixtapes and everything. We just started piffing them out and um, they, they went places. They, they actually did. And I think I did about four of them. Um, I'm in the middle of writing uh, one at the moment, um, which is fucking huge like it's take it's taken a long time but like this is probably like the biggest project of my career right now and so for those who don't know like 808 mafia that's founded by um waka flocker yeah so south side waka flocker um metro boomin they're all the atlanta guys so like i met um uh Meezy from 808 mafia he was one of the engineers there it was it was a cool cunt like he was actually a really cool cunt bonafuku introduced me to him and um I, I think that's when i realized like when i was like sitting there like it was we were in atlanta and um i think it was like 11 p.m and i i just looked around i'm sitting in a room full of like platinum record producers and they're all like bopping to my shit and like the shit that we made in Australia, and I'm just like, holy fuck, okay, cool. We've done something good. And that's when it like it clicked. And I'm like, I need to get back. I like need to get back. I need to, I need to do this right. And um, yeah, that 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 was like a real big, big eye opener. Like I never got to meet like what I wish I'd got to meet Walker Flocker. I met some of the big dudes, but like it, it was really eye opener, like working with Meezy and um yeah, all, all them cats at Plug Life Studios. That was actually great. Ne um, shout out Nephew Texas Boy. He actually sat down with me and gave me a chat for like a good hour, bro. Like he broke all down for me. Like it, it was just like crazy, crazy. And then so who plugged, who plugged that in so that you could connect with these dudes? Um, it was Bonafuku, Bonafuku Beats and uh, Mix Master Monster, the, the two engineers and producers from St. Louis. And then so how did you know them? Bro, they just randomly hit me up online, bro. They're like, bro, your shit's fire. Like, let's make beats together. And so I sent them beats and then they sent me beats and then we started collabing and all that. And then all of a sudden, like, bro, come to America. Like, we'll show you the ropes. And I was just like, Is this, are these cunts fucking with me? Like, what the fuck's going on? Like, I like call my mum and I'm like, yo, so like, I'm going go to go to America, like, if I get killed, I get killed, but I'm literally just like jumping in the deep end and like, I'm just doing some shit. She's like, just be safe, yeah? And um, yeah, so I flew, like I, they offered to pay for my flights and shit. I said, nah, nah, it's all good. I got it, like I, I paid for my own shit. Like I wanted, I wanted to like pay for my own way. You know what I mean? Like I've always been very independent. And um, so um, yeah, so like we got into the connects and I got my visa and I went for like, 21 days I think it was and um yeah they picked me up from the airport bro like it was hectic like I go in the car and all I see is like all like I look to my left and it's Bonafuku just sitting there like puffing like a big ass blunt and he just goes like yo slothy welcome to America and he just passes me a blunt and then I see like guns in the middle of the fucking car and like gold chains everywhere and fucking gold teeth everywhere and shit and I'm just like oh, okay so this shit's real eh and so like not gonna lie, bro, like dead as one of the first thing I did was, can we please, can I please find some Wi-Fi? I just want to tell my mum I'm alive. Like dead, <laughs> dead as. So I like messaged my mother and I'm like, yo, I'm all good. 
some shit like it, it's I did I didn't tell a shit. I just said, look, ma, I'm alive. This can't seem to be a good buy, blah blah blah. And they took me to the studio and I just um they had like a big ass studio complex. Like the thing was huge. Like it was like a two-story building, swimming pool and shit. Like there was like buildings on buildings on buildings and um yeah, um we just worked. So hey. you've come back and obviously you're very motivated and that's when you're really starting to take it seriously. It, it, was, it wasn't even just motivated, it was just eye-opening, eh? Like, ah, oh, cool, like, I've done something. You know what I mean? So I just stuck to it, eh? And then so around this, you know, 2016, 17 period, you dropped some mixtapes. Yep. Uh, you've dropped Purple Fall, you've dropped the instrumental album. There's like four instrumental yeah. albums, bro. Like, there's just so much. Like, I think I've done about fifteen thousand records in my career. Like, I I just stopped counting after like I think it was like I got to like fourteen or thirteen thousand or something like that. And I was just like, you know what? I don't fucking care anymore. It's just like another day, another four records. You know what I mean? Like, it's just I know that I've crossed that line, and I know that like you, I can't count anymore how many records I've done, because like I'm engineering like four records a day plus I'm writing two a day and it, it was just like constant non-stop for like a good five years or so until I started taking like a couple of days off a week um, and then I found myself into other ways of the other parts of the industry and I started dabbling with like filming and other other sides of the int- industry and all that um, but yeah I, at least like there was four to six records every single day no matter what and there'll be like days that i'll literally cook up like eight beats in a day and i'll like literally be in the studio from like 10 a.m to 10 p.m to midnight to 3 a.m at times like fucking going bananas and like i, I knew i was like like my friends looked at me and like like you know what i mean like you're crazy you know what I mean? You're crazy. And I'm just like, I fucking know I'm crazy. Like, I'm doing whatever the fuck I want. You know what I mean? Like, this is my shit. You know what I mean? Like, and like, people came and go, came and go. And then I realized, like, you know, like, it was like filtering through people. And then, like, until it got to the point where I was in the room with the right people. And then 2017, you did, I think, an album with um, Dribbles. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Dribbles. Now, in Adelaide, we got familiar with Dribbles because he was doing Dribbles stuff. was big, bro. Dribbles was big, bro. He's out of the game now. Um, he did some bad shit, um, which I can't comment on. Um, and um, I, 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 I'm in no position to speak about Dribbles. Uh, whatsoever. However, the music we made was great. The music we made went very far and everything. But like, he's out of the game now. Like, he, there's no coming back for him. And 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 um, all peace and love to him and everything. But like, you know, he, he messed up real bad. Um, but he, yeah, Drew, Dribbles was dope. Dribbles was dope to work with. Like, he was. It was one of those dudes where I whip up a beat. And like he'll literally have a verse within like 15 minutes and we'll be recording in my fucking kitchen, bro. Dead as like, we turned like my pantry into a booth, bro. And like, we'll just be recording like, and, and, and it was just like those records went off to get like half a million streams. You know what I mean? Like it was great. Um, I, I miss the, I miss dribbles. Like I miss him, but I, I can't go there again. So in, in Adelaide, we know him I guess predominantly because he was rapping with a dude, Mandels, R.I.P. Mandels. Mandels, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Mandels. Mandolin dribbles, Mandolin dribbles. There was yeah. a time here where you'd see that name on a bill everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then interestingly enough... Uh, I never got to meet Mandel. Um, I just only know the stories. Um, I recorded quite a lot of the stories, um, which I am... Uh, it, it was a privilege to actually record those records because, you know, the way that Dribbles spoke about Mandels was um, phenomenal. It was actually phenomenal. Just the, the way those two were like brothers and, you know, Mandel died in his sleep. And uh, I can only imagine what went through Dribbles' head um, when that happened and everything. and. You know, it, it, it's it's a bit hectic, it's a bit full on, but like, yeah, I, ne- I never got to meet him. Um, I wish I did, but at the same time, you know what I mean? I feel like I did 
because I produced a lot of music that actually um, was dedicated to him and was was um, written about him and and his stories and, and his feelings and everything, you know what I mean? So I feel like I, I was a bit of part of Mandel's life, um, but I wasn't really, I never met him. In the same year, 2017? Yep. Uh, you produced something for Rates. Insomnia. Yeah, Rates, Insomnia. That was a hell of a record. That was a hell of a record. Um, it was meant to be a lot bigger than it was, but, um, you know, back then things were like a little bit more difficult. Like we didn't really have like camera crews and we didn't really have like, you know, all the resources that we have these days and all that, blah, blah, blah. So it was just like a, a SoundCloud track that just went out and... But um, Rates was doing really big numbers back then and it was really, really good shit, really good shit to do. Like, it was a really good eye-opener um, working with him. It, it, it was dope. Like, Rates is actually, like, a dope dude. I, yeah, got, we, I got real love for, like, him. He's a real dope dude. Yeah, no, nah, shout-outs to Rates here. We brought him down once or twice. Yeah, well, there you go. Like, he's actually such a humble cunt. Like, that is. Like, it, it, was, it was really... It was a really good session... It was really, um, hey, it was just a fucking good session. Like, you, you know when you're in the studio and you just like, you just vibe and you just write music like together and shit. It was just a, a good song. Now, how did, being that he's from Sydney, you're from Melbourne, how did that sort of get plugged together? Um, I mean, he was back and forth all the time. He still is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then what, someone, like, did you just meet online or someone made the introduction? Um, I met him at LMG Studios. Um, I was with Manazil and Grilly, and I met him there, and I was just like, "Holy fuck!" Like, you know what I mean? Like, you grow up listening to 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 someone, you're like, "Holy fuck!" Like, hey, my man, <laughs> like, was <well>, good. <laughs> like, nice to meet you. Like, um, I'm a producer, <laughs> and uh, um, it just started with that. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, he's like, "Oh, you do?" I'm like, "Yeah." So I showed him one of my records and he's like, fuck yeah. And the next minute it was just at my house and we we're just producing a record. And Insomnia is still out. It's still available on SoundCloud and um, it never went out to Spotify or anything like that. We probably should have, like, I, 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 we didn't even have access to Spotify back then. Um, it was literally just YouTube or SoundCloud. Um, but um, that was cool. I know he's been off the scene for a while. Um, I'm not sure. Where, I haven't been in contact with him in probably like five years. Um, but I'm very, very, very proud of that record. Yeah. Now, would you say that up until that point, that was the biggest artist in Oz rap that you'd worked with? Um, at that stage in my life, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 100%. Yeah. Um, so that was 2017. Yeah. Um, and then I think 2018, you had a mixtape. Slothy's Wonderland. <laughs> Man, that was funny as. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I, so, I haven't heard that name in a while. Um, that was a fun as mixtape. Like, I was like 13 tracks. I think it was like 13 tracks. Yeah, that album cover cost me like $6,000, bro. It was crazy. Like, it was, um, I think it's still up on Spotify. Um, it was really fun. Like, I dressed up in a bunny suit. And um, I had like all these strippers around me and we, we made like this, this basket full of mushrooms. Um, and like we, we like hired this room that got like turned into like, um, like a forest. It was an Airbnb. It's actually really popular now. Um, and um, yeah, I just dressed up in a bunny suit and I held like a basket full of mushrooms where like all these girls were like reaching for the mushroom. Um, and yeah, that had like dribbles in it, that had fuel in it, that had like a lot of cool cats in it. I'm pretty sure our Boss Baker was in it too. Oh no, Boss Baker was in the next one. He um, he he became a big part of, of the record label by, by by the next album as well. So that was 2018. Yeah. Um, and then in 2019, uh, you actually got yourself in a little bit of trouble. Um, I'm always in trouble. <laughs> like every every room I walk in is just like oh no here we go, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Now um so 2019 uh, yeah. you ended up actually doing a little bit of jail time. You yeah, I did, I did jail time. Um, I can't really talk much about it. Um, but yeah, I got done. Um, 
from someone that was just a bit jealous. It always happens. Um, someone set me up and I got done with a fair bit on me. Um, however, I had a good lawyer. I, I only did three months, which is fuck all. Thank God. Like when you're in there, three months feels like a lot. I know it doesn't sound like a lot at all. I'm not ashamed of it or anything like, if anything, like it made me a better person. Um, uh, it's, it's hard, like, it's hard. Like I, like I said, it sounds like fuck all, but it's actually like when you're, when you're in, you're in, like you're in. It's a bit fucking different. Um, but um, it taught me a lot. It learned me, it, it taught me to um, be with myself. I, re I started reading books. Um, writing a lot as well again, um, and yeah, I got I got my shit together pretty hard. I got I got two years of CCO criminal corrections order after that, so like um, my gun charges were will, will put me in jail, but um, my drug charges gave me a two year um, what well, fifteen months whatever whatever that is fifteen months it's just a, just over a year. Sorry, apologize. Um, yeah, fifteen months. Um, of um, criminal corrections order where I had to do like drug and alcohol counseling, I had to do education and all that. I actually ended up doing a university degree. I went and got my, my engineering degree at um, JMC because I was like, I'm already a fucking sound engineer. I might as well, it was a piece of cake. I'll just walk in and get it. So I did, I walked in, got it, got my degree um, and helped with all my case and everything. And yeah, I got, got set off free. Wow. So just to backtrack a little bit on that and obviously, you know, yeah. speak on what you can and not on what yeah, you yeah. can. Um, so basically what's happened is, is, you know, you're hustling and someone's basically snitched on you. Yeah, yeah. It's typical street shit. Yeah. And then because of that, you've been raided and yep. that's how you've been pinched. Yeah. And then so when that's happened you've been charged with possession of what, narcotics and weapons? Yeah, uh, commercial trafficking. When you get sentenced and you know you're going there, how's the mental preparation for you? Like, do you fucked. Call? <laughs> <laughs> fucked, bro, like fucked. Like you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on outside. You have no contact with anyone. Like lucky I knew my mum's phone number by heart and they're like, you have two minutes to make a phone call. I call my mum, like mum, I'm in jail, bro. Like. I'm sorry, I fucked up. Can you get Avery to, um, you know, find me and all that? So she had to find me in the justice system. And, um, you know, mum um, was obviously disappointed and shit. Um, but they found me, the, we, 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 we worked through it and yeah. So your, your first day in there, right? When you, with that, when they, I guess they slam that door, you're in that cell yeah. and it's your first day and you've yeah. got you three months ahead of you. How was that for you mentally? Like what's going through your mind? Is, is there fear? Are you worried about violence? Are you- No. I was just like, cool, I got it done. Like, not cool, but like, ah, right, I got it done. You accepted it? Yeah, I literally copped it on the chin. I was like, all right, cool, let's do this. And then you just said- Yeah, I, I stood up to the judge. And I'm like, yeah, I'm guilty. I had that, I had that, I did that. Yeah, cool, no worries. So like pleaded guilty and everything and like, she was, yeah, she was very um, understanding and all that. Oh, well, I'm not gonna talk about my case. Um, but um, yeah, it was just the, the, the whole like, got done, cop it on the chin, do what you gotta do, get the fuck out, get your shit together. Now, when I've spoken to people that have done time, they basically say that at some point in time, you're probably gonna get tested in there. And if and when you do, you know, you've just gotta, you gotta have a crack. In the three months that you were in there, did you have any altercations or situations no comment. to testing you? No comment. No comment? No comment. After you've done your time, so you've done your three months. Yep. Uh, then around the same time is when you've launched your OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got, I got out and, and um, I found like, you know, I, I, I went hard with music and then... Um, uh, we, 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 cause we went hard with music before and then like I had all these connections just like strippers and shit from like my previous album and all that. Like it started happening into the industry a little bit more and um, started doing a lot more photo shoots and stuff. And then all of a sudden I found myself, you know, doing porn. 
And um, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, I found myself doing porn. I'm like, cool. Yeah, and um, that's when I tapped into like the whole OnlyFans culture and um, Pornhub and um, yeah, pirouettes and shit. So when you first got into the whole adult industry thing, was OnlyFans the first thing, like the first platform you were on or was there stuff before? Yeah, that was OnlyFans. It was OnlyFans. It was always OnlyFans first. Like it's, I feel like everybody goes on OnlyFans first because like, they're too scared of the world looking at them. And then like, when your confidence comes through and like, you're actually like, oh, I'm doing this shit for real. Like I'm doing this shit proper. Like, ah, oh, cool, market me to the fucking world. You know what I mean? Like, and that's when you go and tap into like the bigger companies, you know what I mean? And like, um, it took me a minute, like Lex is actually Ella. Um, she was my first, uh, we, like the first movie I ever put out on Pornhub was with Lex myself, with Lex and myself. And um, that's when I like, I literally went out to like, all right, cool, let's go out to the world where like, I'm not hustling like. <sighs> Ishkwan, I fucking love you, but I'm in the middle of a fucking interview. <laughs> oh, could you leave this on? All right, shout out Ishkwan, my engineer, is right now in the studio with 66 Records. Shout out Ecosystem, we got some big shit coming. I love you, I gotta go. I'm in the middle of an interview. I'll fire you tomorrow. <laughs> I'll call you later. I'm now. Yeah, yeah, my bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now, so we're talking, um, yeah, we're talking about how you got uh, into, the, into the porn industry. Yep. And that, uh, yeah, you know, the first thing that you tapped in through was uh, OnlyFans. Yep. Um, now, first of all, what really inspired you or motivated you to get into the porn industry? And then once you got in through OnlyFans, how long was it before you started, you know, I guess delving into other platforms? It's hot shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's really it. Like, who doesn't like to fucking get paid for it, yeah? Like, you know what I mean? And it was just like, you know, I, I, have, I have a niche myself. Um, and it was just like, let's work with it. And I found some cool people that, that, that were in the, same, in the same boat. And I'm like, yeah, let's fucking do some shit. And I've got my own skills. They got their own skills, and we put all that together, and we just started working, and it it just became a big, big thing. You know what I mean? And then, so how long were you doing the OnlyFans? I thing? still am. But before you, I guess, branch out, because you said that like after OnlyFans, oh, like a year. I think it was about a year until I met Ella. And then, and what was your next step or the next platform that you talking were to you? <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think there is a next step. I think like right now I'm just working. Um, but you mentioned like Pornhub, like you did a- Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's out there now. Like, huh? So how does, how, how, do you, how does one like get a video on Pornhub? You just film it and put it up. But it, yeah, so, it's so there's like there's like obviously like you gotta go through like there's we we're, we all play very safe like we all get STI checks we all sign paperwork we sign legal agreements we um, do model release forms and everything all through online as well and make sure that everyone's safe and everything and then we upload everything and we distribute our royalties together and. Um, we we go pretty fair on it but um it's very like it's not like oh you upload a video of your ex no it's that doesn't work that way like you actually need like legal paperwork to upload your shit um otherwise it just gets taken down like these days take shit gets taken pretty serious so like the process is the paperwork comes from the Pornhub platform they're like if you yeah we got we got our own paperwork and then we got like um, Pornhub paperwork as well. So like Pornhub sends us paperwork that we both have to sign, us three or whatever, like we're about to do a movie tonight. So like we all need to sign paperwork and everything submitted and everything before like we even upload the video. Like we all have to get like verified and accepted and everything before. With like our ID. Yeah, like we have to, yeah, good point. 
forgot about that part. You have to literally hold your ID. You have to get facial verified. You have to get ID verified. You have to get your street address. Every, like it goes to each, every fucking detail. And this it. is what Pornhub is requesting yeah. of the people that are submitting. Yeah. Okay. And then once it's cleared and then it's released. You send your video out. Yeah, so then you send your video out, they upload it, and then how does the royalties work? Does the like they keep you get a percentage? Paid. <laughs> they keep a percentage, obviously, for hosting it. Um, just um, so whatever channel it gets uploaded to, it's the same as YouTube. Ad review. Yeah. Yeah. So we get ad review, ad ad payments. Ad revenue. Ad revenue. She knows, but she actually taught me all the ropes. She's the Pornhub queen, like. <laughs> Dead as if there's a mentor here, it's her. Like dead as she knows all the ropes. Like the amount of phone calls we have had back and forth, where she just sat me down. Like, all right, cool. You need to do this, this, and that. Blah blah. Had to set up so many accounts. Blah blah, and everything to do everything. And um, but yeah, like so she uploads a video to her account. The money goes to her account. I upload a video to my account. The money goes to my account and all that. So it just depends on what what account. Like it's not like. I don't really do it for the money. I do it for the fact that like we love what we do and it's good fun and games. Like it's actually like dope. Um, the money's just a bonus, I guess. And then would you say that like is, if you compare OnlyFans, doing stuff on OnlyFans to doing stuff on Pornhub, is the money better from one than the other? Or oh, on fuck, that's a hell of a question, eh? Um, so like OnlyFans, you gotta like really hustle and like talk to sh- stupid cunts. Like I'm sorry, like I apologize to my 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 beloved my beloved OnlyFans like fans, um, but a lot of you is like dead as like they are some stupid shit. You know what I mean? Um, and you really gotta hustle like that twenty dollars. You know what I mean? But like when you put it up on Pornhub, it's just like putting shit up on YouTube. You literally get paid from ad revenue. So you don't really have to hustle your money. You just got to make good content. And that's what like a lot of people are scared of, like making content and let it go out to the world. A lot of people want to keep private, you know what I mean? Or send, sell this one video to one person for $50. And you know what I mean? You stay so secluded and private when I don't really give a fuck. Like, I'll literally send that video to 50 people instead of sending it to one person and make the same amount of money. So like, it's it's like, you know, you can sell, you can hustle it to one person for 50 bucks or you can just send it out, goes, gets played by like 50 people and get the same amount of money. Like the logic is right there. So like you take it in however you want. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. And then I guess like, you know, with rap, you know, you, you grow up with your favorite rappers. With sport, you grow up with your favorite athletes. Are you a fan of like the actual porn game and do you follow? Um, I follow myself, eh? <laughs> that as, um, I've got a lot of friends in the industry that I support and they're like, I'm a fan of, you know what I mean? I'm fans of like a lot of people that I work with, which is, um, I guess it's like uh, general like, how would you call it? Um, it's just support like in, within your team. You know what I mean? Like, obviously I look up to like some bigger people like, um, uh, fuck, what's his name? The guy with the bald head. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, Johnny who? You're asking me? Oh fuck, I can't remember his name. Um, you were a fan of me though. Yeah, I was, I was. Before any of this. Yeah, I was, I was. Um, the Ikea video. <laughs> she, she, has an Ikea, she has a video where she fucked in Ikea and she, it's got 48 million views. Legend. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, you shouldn't be interviewing me. Like, dead ass, like 48 million views, like fucking in Ikea. Like, who the fuck has the, like, are you, are you bananas? <laughs> <laughs> um, Johnny Sins. Johnny Sins is the GOAT. Shout out Johnny Sins. If, I know you're never gonna watch this, but like, if it ever happens that someone can pass you this, like Johnny Sins, you are the GOAT. Um, I used to have uh, on, my, um, on my Instagram, it used to be, my bio used to be halfway between Ron Jeremy and DJ Khaled, right? But um, turns out that Ron Jeremy's got a lot of like, um, rape charges and all that, so I kind of had to remove that. Eh? But 
Like a lot of like a lot of a lot of my friends have met Ron Jeremy and like that you know they they say like yeah he, no comment. One of the things that people often wonder about is the whole health and STD risk yeah. within the industry now. I mean it's like common yeah like people catch a cold yeah. People get like, you know what I mean? Like you, you, you got to work, you know what I mean? And, and your co-worker had COVID and he's given you COVID or whatever, you know what I mean? It's very similar in the sex industry, yeah? So there's like small diseases and big diseases that you got to look out for. So like before we film, like we all get STI checked. Um, we all present our paperwork. Like I send my paperwork through to the girls before I get here. I don't sleep with anyone in between my tests and my films. And then when I go back home, I get tested before, before I, excuse me, before I sleep with anyone else and all that, blah, blah, blah. So we keep pretty safe because like there is, there is a few things out there that you can catch that um, are, are, are not reversible, you know what I mean? Like no one wants to go home with HIV or anything like that. So we all play pretty safe. Like I won't shoot with anyone that, like with someone that doesn't show paperwork like, at all. It's just, it just doesn't happen. Like, I, like I'll, wear a, I'll wear a condom if it's a blowjob and stuff like that even. Like, as, like, it just gets to that fucking extreme. Like, there's been a lot of, like, thing that ha things that have happened in the industry in the past that I, ha I have seen. You know, like, groups of people that get, like, diseases and all that and everything. And um, I just stand there and I'm like, better be safe, eh? You know what I mean? It's just like, you know what I mean? Like when your mate gets COVID and he went to a fucking festival and gave it to fucking 10 people, like, bro, like stay home. You know what I mean? So we all play pretty safe. I guess it's a part of respect as well. So like, you've got to respect your co-workers and like, you've got to really respect who you actually work with. So like, if you have the respect to like, um, work with them and be intimate with them, then you gotta have the respect of actually like look after your health and look after their health because at the end of the day, you are playing with their health as well. And then so when you talk about things that you've seen happen in the industry with, with yeah. diseases, can you talk about, <clears throat> I guess, some of the things that you have seen and what are some of the common diseases? Um, Oh, there's just like a couple of little things like people pass on things like gonorrhea and stuff, but like the things that literally like you can just get rid of with like an antibiotic, you know what I mean? But um, which is literally like a cold, but sexually, you know what I mean? Um, and it sucks at times, but that, like that's what like when you see people doing that, it's just like, bro, like get tested. You know what I mean? So like I said, like I only really shoot with people that I trust. Like we don't, we don't really like, we look after ourselves. You know what I mean? Like you've got to like be, you got to play safe. And then um, like around this 2000, cause I noticed that I think before the porn stuff, you didn't really have all the ink. And then around that time. Oh yeah, I got covered, eh? <laughs> like, um, so like I looked for a tattooist for a while and um, Eventually, I found Vic. Shout out Victory Fox. She's my tattooist. Um, she's done 99% of my body. Um, not like my 99% of my body's covered. I mean like 99% of my tattoos. Um, there's only a couple of little things that haven't been done by her that have been done randomly by other tattooists. But um, yeah, I finally found a tattooist that I liked because I wanted, you know, a neo-trad psychedelic kind of jungle all through it with... Um, geometrics dividing things and it's just a whole heap of crap and um yeah i've just been getting tattooed like what once to twice every single <coughs> month for the past few years and we just finished my back that took 30 hours um my right sleeve's done <coughs> as well and we just started like my legs are starting as well now and um soon to finish my leg once my legs are done we'll do my torso and my left arm and then i'll be done like so the, did the tattoos thing come into play because you were going to do the porn stuff? No, fuck no. So there was no... No, no, no. I just yeah. wanted to be... Like, I wanted as I wanted to be tattooed in a specific way regardless. Like, I really did. Like, I, I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, cool, I want this, this and that. You know what I mean? Just like you, 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 like you go, go into your home and like, oh, cool, I'm going to arrange my furniture or whatever. I look at my body... And I, um, I arrange myself like, what do I want? What I'm gonna do, blah, 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 like. 
And um, yeah, I found the right tattooist and I started working with it and, you know, it's just big, begun and now it's been about four years in the making, four or five years and we're about maybe a quarter of the way done but it's hours and hours and hours. It's like so exhausting. But um, hopefully by the age of like, say, 40, I'll be finished. No, serious. Like, I'll be literally covered. So my neck down, all the way down to my feet. My hands are going to remain untouched. Uh, but the rest of my body will be completely done. You know, if you compare the music industry to the adult film industry, uh, is there one that you enjoy more than the other? And if so, why? And the other part of the question is, which one is the most lucrative for you from your experience? I enjoy both just as much. Um, music's my full-time gig. Um, the adult industry is my outlet. So like music's my full-time, adult's part-time, right? Um, I have so much fun like when I do the adult content because like I get to travel Australia. Like I get to travel with music too, yeah? But it's like, um, it's different. It's just, they're just two different, completely different things. Uh, they're two completely different worlds. Um, and to be able to mix them together is kind of dope. Um, I, I love all of my rappers. I love what I do in the studio um, just as much as I love working with my girls and I, I appreciate every, every second that we put, in, put into every, everything that we do. Um, both are very mentally challenged and mentally exhausting games, I guess, both of them, because like as, as an engineer and producer, you've got to, uh, you know, maneuver an artist and, you know, work with an artist through something, through a record, and you deliver a product. When I'm working with one of the girls, I'm doing the exact same thing. Like I'm working with them and we deliver a product. Like we, we work together to kind of like um, make the best that we can. And yeah, the, the reward's excellent. Like it's, it's, the reward is fucking amazing. Like seeing what we did at the end of the day, it's just like, fuck yeah. Like I've been punching the nuts like mid scenes, I've been like fucking like, there's been so much dumb shit, like I've vomited mid scenes. I, <laughs> I've fallen off beds. I've, um, you know, I've, it's just so much dumb shit has happened, but same thing in the studio. Like, you know what I mean? Like we've, we've done some dumb shit, like, you know, and, and it's just happened. It's just part of the process, but like, what we've done to get to like, hey, we fucking did it. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. That's the reward. Like, like, that's the best part of it. What's your most memorable to date? Like your most memorable scene, you know, in adult film and why? All of them. All of them. I've got to say all of them. Um, I cherish every moment. I try not to favorite anyone. I try not to um, be too. Um, yeah, I try not to. Like, I try to give love to everybody. Like, I feel like it's 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 more uh, genuine. It's more um, humble to like you know pick and choose. You know what I mean? No, like be good to everybody. So like I cherish every moment that I've done with everybody. Um, I've done probably about. 35 to 40 films in my life like that, that have been released, probably about close to 100 that haven't been released, like in total. Um, and um, it's, I, I, like I said, every single one has something to remember, remember from, from like the time that I lifted her up, like literally on my fucking shoulder, <laughs> like literally like her, she had like, her vagina was like right here and we're like literally up against the fucking wall and I just have her air there and I'm just like eating her out to like the point that like uh, Nova, my housemates, like literally almost headbutting the camera. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
<laughs> and like it's to the point that she's like almost headbutting the camera to the point where like Avery is actually there's a clip of Avery looking at me like with the most angriest face because she couldn't breathe during a blowjob scene and then the the times where we just literally roll off the bed and fall over and like oh it's just some some crazy shit happens like it's it, it, it's it's wild. It's it's really it's like the wild west, but fun. We're not close on. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Eh? When you when you talk about having forty fifty uh, films that are released, about thirty five to forty tops. Yeah, right. I think it's about thirty six that I'm on. Now that's not on OnlyFans. This is on yeah on OnlyFans. Ah, uh, okay. And then you've got like another. I think I've got like. Six or seven on Pornhub. Um, so I used to run a couples channel with an old partner of mine, and we used to be a Pornhub couple. And um, but that got that like we broke up, and that got taken down. Um, what a can of worms that you just opened, eh? Um, shout shout out my ex, bro. That has like it's not even eleven eleven. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Um, yeah, so, like, we, we had, like, a lot of movies together and shit, but, like, they got taken down and put back up, like, a few times because, like, I know she she kept them. And I said, have them, like, go go for your life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the, a couple of them are still on my channel. Like, I'm proud of what we did. Like, there's no hard feelings between me and her or whatsoever. Like, we still support what we did at the end of the day. It's work, it's work, you know what I mean? The whole conversation of having a relationship while you're in the porn industry... Is that like a difficult, you know, is that like a difficult thing to balance? Is that common in the industry that people have um, partners? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just a job, bro. Like, we learn to be polyamorous and open. Um, polyamorous is like navigating through a gray area constantly. Um, and it's it's really it's all about like communication with like your partners. So like I would have like multiple partners, and so my partner will have multiple partners. But we still we we are uh, like so like the partner that I started with. That's what you call a nesting partner. So that's a partner that you go home to. Like you know what I mean. And like we we. Um, have our own boundaries and we establish our own rules and all that so like i i don't bring like people to our own bedroom and she doesn't bring people to our own bedroom so like we respect each other in that sense you know what i mean and um you find ways so like everybody is different and everybody works their own way like it all comes down to like communication so like there's a lot of things like this is funny but it's a true thing. It's called a one penis policy. So like a lot of males like can't stand like another male like fucking the the woman. You know what I mean? Um, but will uh, be all for like the woman fucking a girl. So like that's what you call a one penis policy. So like that's like the first step into like opening up. So like all right, cool. You can go fuck another human. You know what I mean? Um, and then like you you move on from that and like, all right, cool, you might give it a go of letting it, letting it go to another male, you know what I mean? And that's how you open into the polyamory world and like you start establishing your boundaries. And that's when you talk to your partner and like what you're comfortable and what you're not comfortable with. So like me and Avery, Avery is my nesting partner, we are very comfortable with multiple partners and we travel, uh, we have our own porn crews. Like she's got her own porn crew and I've got my own porn crew and uh, we do our own thing. Event, like uh, there comes times that we meet and we, uh, we collaborate. So we, we bring our, our porn crews, not porn crews together, but like we'll find someone that like, hey, let's collaborate with this person. Yeah, cool. But mainly we're out in the field doing our own work, you know what I mean? Like we don't really, um, yeah, we, we don't really um, have too many boundaries other than respect. And like I said, like I, I, I respect her, I communicate with her, she knows where I am, she knows who I'm with. Um, you know, if I, if I go out and I end up with someone or whatever, I always make sure that I message her and like, hey, like I'm safe, I'm here, like blah 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 this is happening cool no worries thanks for letting me know you know what i mean it all comes down to communication and that comes down to respect 
for you yourself, you know, you're in the adult film industry and your partner is in the adult film industry and you guys, you know, you have your boundaries and it all works. Yeah. Now, is there ever a scenario or is it very common where one of the people is in the industry and they have a partner that is not in the industry or does that just never happen? Uh, yeah, it does happen. I sleep with people that are not in the industry, she does too. Like, there's no issue with that. Like, as long as we communicate it. I mean, like, do you ever see, like, someone that's in the industry, so say someone like yourself, have a full-time relationship with someone that is not, and even though they're not, they accept that. Oh, I get what you mean. Yeah. Um, fuck, that's a real one, eh? You see that? It's hard to get along with people who aren't. Like, yeah, you see. It doesn't sure. last, really. Yeah, like, if they're not supported, they're not supported, eh? It's basically, if you're in the industry, you're in the industry. If you're not, then they don't really understand. Yeah. Your partner needs to you, get you, it. You, you, to your get partner it. didn't get it, didn't it? Yeah, no, he's not in the industry at all. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's some bullshit. Because, like, like how, it is what it is. at the end of the day, like, how can you not support your partner and what they love? You know what I mean? Like, I don't give a fuck whether it's sex or fucking hunting aliens, bro. I don't give a fuck. Like, support your partner with what they love. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm sorry you went through that as well. Like, that's some bullshit. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's some bullshit. Like, that's some bullshit. Um, but, yeah, um, I... Yeah, I don't see that much of it. It's usually like most of us that are partnered are partnered with people in the industry and the people that believe it for, oh, this goes back to the one penis policy. Most, <laughs> most people, like a lot of girls that are partnered and are in the industry, but the, the, the partners are not in the industry end up having the one penis policy and shit like that and don't really normalize like general polyamory and you know open ship and you know what i mean like the whole non non um binary um culture of like you know what i mean it doesn't really matter if your partner is with a male or a female or a mutant or whatever you know what i mean like fuck like you know what i mean if they want to go with Steve that I don't fucking know like fucking let him go you know what I mean like as long as they come home with you to you and they're, they're healthy they're safe they communicate with you then that's all that should fucking matter you know what I mean like yeah um, I've got a lot of interests in life and things that I want to do that my partner doesn't have the fucking interest to so why should I limit myself to that and the same thing goes to her like she's got a lot of interests in life of things that she wants to do that I'm not fucking interested in so why the hell should I limit her life that she only gets one of to because like oh hang on I'm not interested in that fucking you're not allowed to do that fuck off that's manipulative so like go out do your thing, you know what I mean? As long as you're happy, like, you know what I mean? Just make sure that you come home safe, one piece, you communicate with me, then it's all good. Like, I think that everybody should have that kind of mentality because it's, it's just like, at the end of the day, we, we don't really get uh, many opportunities in life. You know what I mean? And every single, like, if you do the maths behind life, like a 70, a 70 year period, is like what, 28,000 days? It's tw sorry, 20, 27 or 26,000 days, something like that. Yes. Quick maths, right? Then, then you're minus what? Uh, eight, say you sleep eight hours a night, say 8,000 fucking days or whatever, that you, 7,000 days that you, sl that you lose. You're, you're 19,000 days, yeah, by 70 years, yeah? You only got 19,000 days to live, yeah? Why the hell are you taking those days away from someone to live their fucking lives just because you are um, uh, uncomfortable or um, you're not uh, mature enough to understand open ship and um, let your partner do whatever the hell they want with their life. You can't really expect one person to satisfy 100% of your needs. Correct. It takes the pressure off of you as well. Yeah, like fucking oath it does. Like it's um, when when I op when we me and Avery opened up, like hey, like you know, polyamory, hey. 
And we're like, yeah, like, let's do it. It took a lot of pressure off ourselves because we were, she wanted to do some things that I wasn't interested in and I wanted to do some things that I wasn't interested in, in that she wasn't interested in, sorry. And it took um, a lot to get there as well. Oh, fucking ice it does. It's like, bro, I went to therapy. I'm not fucking, I'm not hiding that shit either. I went to, I purposely searched for a psychologist a specific psychologist to speak about it and actually learn through it and reprogram my brain out of their monogamy bullshit that they teach you like in church school. Like you're gonna die and you're gonna burn at the fucking cross if you just look at another woman, fuck off idiot. Like dead as, like anyways. And I just broke out of that. But like I cried, I, I was in pain, I hurt and now I'm free. You're both free. Yeah, we both are. And I guess my last question... Good call, thank you. My last question on, you know, the whole topic of being in the adult industry is when you, say, gone out to a bar, a club, a gig, whatever the case may be, and you meet a girl... Strippers, you got to go to Strat City. <laughs> these two, bro, Strats in Adelaide. If you see these two, bro, you're in for a fucking good time, Wouldn't bro. have it any other way. Good lesbian. See what I mean? Like red hair and coloured hair, bro. Like that is, that is like. Woo! I can't wait to finish this. Off. I can't wait to finish this interview. I just tell you that right now. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, so man. When when you do go out to like a, a gig, a club, mm -hmm. club or whatever, and you meet a girl. Hit me. Um, yeah, I'm gonna guess sometimes a conversation comes up and they find out that you're in the in the adult film industry. It Just, can go both ways. Yeah, does, yeah it goes both ways. Either fucking like oh or like oh like it's it's just there's no middle ground. It's just like hello or like goodbye. <laughs> it's either one way or the other. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, like same with blokes. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Like it's just it's just there's there's no in the middle. Like oh really? Let me talk to you. But no. No. No one was no one was to fucking be curious about it. It's just like okay goodbye or like oh let me buy you a drink. What can you do with that tongue, mate? Like you know what I mean? Like <laughs> link in bio as well, by the way. Anyway. <laughs> um. And I guess, is it like 50-50 or is it more often that they're, you know? No, it's a 50-50. It's, it's definitely. It's literally 50-50. Yeah. It's a <laughs> bro, you throw a rock in the ocean, bro. You're either going to hit a fish or you're going to hit the ground, bro. I swear to God. <laughs> wow. There it is, bro. Like, there, it's that, Russian yeah. yeah. Except no. that we're, it's not Russian, it's, we're in Australia, but... Like. <laughs> it's just Aussie roulette, yeah. It's just roulette, yeah. it's, it's just roulette, it's, it's just roulette. Yeah. <laughs> 2021, uh, you've had a hand in, I guess, sort of repopping Melbourne's career? Repopping? I, I, I've been working with him for years. Now, it's it's not much about repopping. We literally just the the the, the Melbourne's been my, my one of my number one boys for years, bro. Like Melbourne hit me up when um, I remember being at, uh, in Boronia, um, and I was I was I was back, back. This is back in the filthy field days, yeah. And and Melbourne messaged me on no, there was someone else that messaged me on Instagram and the or Facebook or some bullshit. It was one of those media platforms and they're like, yo, this guy needs an engineer. And I'm like, all right, cool, I'll message him. And I messaged Melbourne, I'm like, yo, I'm an engineer. And I'm still learning, but like, um, I, know, I know you're coming up as well, but like, I'm will, I, I, I would like to put my hand up to be your engineer and all that. And he's like, yeah, fucking nice, my brother. And it was very, he was a very nice dude. Like, and to this day, like it's been seven years working with Melbourne. I swear to God, like he's, not only a client, but he's one of my best friends, like in the music industry, like every single time in the studio is a vibe. We always have fun and everything. And I didn't like repop his career. Like it's not just me doing something for him. It's always just us. It's always us. Like there's no me when it comes to 
uh, Melbourne and myself, like I am very selfless when it comes to Melbourne as well. Like Melbourne's a superstar. Like, come on, brother, let's go. You know what I mean? Like, I, I am, I am more than willing to push him forward. I don't want to give a fuck if my name is on the is on the record or not. Like, come on, brother. You know what I mean? Like, I've been with him from day dot, and now we're on national radio. Like. Australia wide, worldwide actually, you know what I mean? And um, I've got a lot of love for brotherhood. Like we, we built not just him, but he built brotherhood and he messaged me asking me to be the, the engineer for brotherhood. And I'm like, fuck yeah, like, of course, like that's not even a fucking question. Like I got you, like, and, and like Melbourne is, is, Melbourne is, is hands down one of the best people you'll ever meet. Yeah, word. And then, so I guess if the grind has been happening for a few years prior to that, yeah, is there something in particular that happened in 2021 that, you know, that kind of got him more known at that point in time? Like, was it a particular single that you worked on or? Ah, uh, Side Bitch, This and That, Pablo. Pablo just went gold, man. Like, we gold. Like we're still we're still waiting for all like the bullshit. Like the, there's a lot of paperwork and shit. But like, you know what I mean? Like we 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 done shit. Like every I, every single record with with Melbourne is 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 beautiful. Like every single record. Like every single record with him is beautiful. Now he recently did uh, what is it? The hood bars. <sighs> segment yeah that was hard eh? yeah that man. was hard bro that was so hard bro when you took those sh no comment <laughs> well I, I, I gotta go <laughs> <laughs> i gotta i'm sorry bro like shout out danny grant danny i did not do this <laughs> danny's our manager shout out danny grant shout out wet pussy oh catch me on the next wet pussy episode at sexpo Talking about some shit, bro. Dead ass, like it's gonna be some great shit. Anyway, yeah, keep going. Now, um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I've seen all the hood bars or how many there is. Because oh, there's a few. There's there's actually two seasons at the moment. Yeah, but it's still somewhat relatively new. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Hundred percent. Now, out of the ones that I've seen, that one in particular, I feel is the best one that I've seen. Cool. One that I appreciate I like you the most. Yep. Um, now, first of all, did you were you on the production for yes. the beat that was used? Um, so I didn't produce the beat. So I think Paradigm did the beat. I did the uh, the, the post production on it. So like, I get beats sent to me and I alter them into my own way. Um, so I do a lot of the post production. So like, a lot of beats get sent to me and they're like, you know, not like they're ready to be recorded and then they like they get recorded on and then I do the, like the final touches on them and everything. So um, uh, that puts me as a co-producer. So I'm not like the original producer of the record, um, or sorry, of the beat. Um, but at the end of the day, I do produce the final record, yes. And then so because you've produced the final record, I'm going to assume that you've heard the bars that he's going to drop on that before he's actually filmed it. Yes. And I guess one of the things that makes it such a talked about bars clip is the fact that he fired a few shots at HP boys. Um, and I'm not here. <laughs> Bro, I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I just work here. I'm just doing my job. Don't get me involved in this shit. Like, I... <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> right? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I just work here. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't you dare, like, I love you. You're a sick cunt. Like, I swear to God. <laughs> you funny motherfucker. Like, I swear to God. But I, that's got nothing to do with me. I'm the engineer. I, I, I just work here. Just work here. Yeah, fucking no, Thailand. Just work here. Don't leave me hanging. That's what I'm talking about. Now, because you... <laughs> You know, obviously when the public's heard it, we're all just like, fucking wow, he's gone in. He's gone in on HP. Um, I don't want to comment on it. But... I know, I, know, I know you want to talk about it, yeah, but like you need to talk... You need to get Mel oh, Melbourne... Let me get Melbourne on the phone. <laughs> Melbourne, my brother, I fucking... I just letting you know that I'm in an interview with The Lesson at the moment and we're talking about hood bars. And they're asking about the shots 
uh, that you took at, um, who was it? HP boys. HP boys. Um, I just want to uh, clarify that I said no comment, and I said that you, they, to ask you. So you're gonna have to come to the lesson and talk. I love you, bro. I hope you have the best weekend of your fucking life, brother. You're a sick kind. I can't wait to see you. Have the best day of your fucking life. That's the one, brother. Cool. We just did a track. We, two, we just did two features with 360 at the moment as well. We just dropped uh, too many with Amu. He's a gold record. Uh, gold record artist were bro shout out Amul bro Sh Amul just signed with uh, Brotherhood Music and he's he's hands down one of the best people you ever there we go fucking Ron like Melbourne just uh, just la um, laugh reacted at my at my thing and he goes you know you know the go my bra you the mad cunt uh, the time will come soon I'm off to bed my bra like you get an interview soon see can't love you bro. Amu, like dead as Amu, Brotherhood Music, Millsy, Melbourne, like dead as Amu is one of the best human beings I've ever fucking met in my life. And I swear to God, like, bro, dead as putting Melbourne and Amu on a record was probably one of the best things I've done in my fucking career. Like, the fact that I put Melbourne and 360 is just like given, like, right? Like, that's OG bullshit, like, not bullshit, like, that's OG shit, like, that's OG, like, you got 360 and you got Melbourne, two different, complete opposite worlds, like, boom, like, that's our record, bro, that's a hit, and we actually have two of them, but Amu and Melbourne, both of them peaking in the same genre, bro, like, too many, hands down, one of the best records I've ever worked on, like, I, I, I cannot, I don't have enough words to describe the feeling of working on that record with them because it was just incredible. Another artist that you worked with, uh, also 2021, was you produce Wombat's um, Letter to Nikki? Yeah, I did. Now, Bro, that was fuck. Like, when I actually, like, realized that Wombat walked into my studio, I'm like, holy fuck. Fucking shit, like, all right, I'm doing this, hey. Like, um, for those who don't don't know Aussie hip hop, Wombat's like one of the biggest names in in the in the Aussie hip hop um, world. Like, it's just like he's he's incredible. Like, he's actually incredible. Um, and you know, he 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 walked in. He was real. He was. Nothing but a, a, a good energy. <coughs> Coffee. <laughs> you done? You done? Are you done? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> um, he, he was nothing but good energy. And that's when I called Busa. Busa is one of my photographers. I'm like, bro, like, um, Wombat's coming to the studio. He's like, you what? I'm like, yeah, can you, like, make yourself available and he's like I'm on my way it's like instantly like holy shit like Wombat's coming through like that that was another big eye opener like you know when 360 hit us up when like Melbourne's been with us for, for forever so like you know what I mean like he's always like we give him the best treatment you know what I mean like so so is all the SP boys so all the brotherhood boys you know what I mean but like you know when you get when you get outsourced by like you know, other big names from other other uh, production companies, you know what I mean? And other other teams, you know what I mean? Because we all have our own teams, you know what I mean? It's like it's like football, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's in their own team, you know what I mean? Like, you, you're all in your city, you're all in your town, you know what I mean? You got your own fucking, you got your own marketers, you got your own producers, you got your own engineers and all that, blah, blah, blah. But like, when someone like Big comes from, Another, another community, another production company, another, another team, you know what I'm saying, comes to you and she's like, holy fucking shit, like we're doing something right, you know what I mean? And um, Wombat hit me up and I was just like, holy fuck, like, okay, cool, let's do this, you know what I mean? And his management was on the phone, like, they, they, they were nothing but organized and it was great, like, it was absolutely great. And when we did Letter to Nikki, I was like, holy fuck, you're giving me this record? Like, are you serious, bro? Like, this is deep. Like, it wasn't just a rap record. Like, his mate died. You know what I mean? Like, his friend, I, I got to produce that. I got to engineer, you know, the letter to Nikki. You know what I mean? Rest in peace, Nikki. You know what I'm saying? Like. And it was just, it was great. It was just so, 
deep. Um, so me, me and Wombat been tight ever since. Like it was, it was a great moment. It was an absolute fucking great moment. And as far as bar spitters in Australia, like just bars, just barring <coughs> out, where would you put him? Top 10. This year, uh, you were in the, in the studio with Flo's. Flo's De Leone. Shout out Flo's, bro. I swear to God, bro, you're a sick cunt. Um, Flo's, bro, uh, Blood Juice. Shout out Blood Juice. Um, Blood Juice brought him to my studio. Um, Blood Juice did uh, an episode of Flo's, uh, an episode of uh, Spitting Blood with Flo's De Leone. And um, shout out Blood Juice. They're, they're sick cunts. Like, absolute, very well organized people as well. Um, they, um, they broke flows and um, flows, flows and I re related in a few things, you know, because he's done time, I've done time and, you know, we, we've both been in the game for a while and, you know, I grew up listening to, bro, it was so embarrassing, like, he walks into my studio and, like, I shook his hand, like, bro, I've been listening to you for, like, for fucking years and I just thought to myself, like, you fucking idiot, like, shut up, like, you fanboy motherfucker, you know what I mean, like, and I'm just like, bro, like, fuck, like, I'm just going to sit down, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he he's 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 excellent and um you know we, we did our we did our first record which was Spit in Blood and you know I I I swallowed that pill and not long ago he messaged me and he goes, Slothy you see can't like can I come through again? I'm like, bro, like fucking of course. And, um, you know, we, we began to build a, a relationship, a friendship, you know what I mean? Not just, uh, not just as, uh, as his engineer, but you know what I mean? Like, we literally chilled in the studio for a good hour and a half, like, just fucking talking and shit, you know what I mean? Because we, we both come from the same shit. And, you know, he's one of the OGs, one of the creators of, of Australian hip hop. And, um, you know, I've been an engineer since day dot. And, we would both relate to a lot of things, and um, I'm ve very, very proud to be by his side and engineering him because he's a very talented person. And you know what what he went through. You know those three years that he did in jail. And you know I can't, I can't. You know I only did three months myself. You know what I mean? It's nothing compared to the three years. You know that's ten percent. Um, but. Um, I, I can relate to a lot of things and, and we, we actually get along pretty well and he's not going to lie, he's a very, despite like everything that he spat in the past and like what he did with, with a lot of his music in the past, he's fucking, he's a good person. He's a really good person and I, I love to see the change in people going from, you know, like I done bad, I learned, I do good. And, and I like finding myself around good people that create good things, great things, and want to be great at what they do, at their craft, you know what I mean? Like, I, I like to sit down at my desk and when I write a record, I like to be great at what I do, you know what I mean? I know he brings that same energy to himself. And he brings that same energy when he comes to the studio. And we just did this record with Don Drino. The other day, shout out Don Drino in the Gold Coast as well, bro. That that record's hard, bro. That's coming out. Like, I gave you a preview of that. That, no comment. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I can vouch, man. That was fucking that fire. That is hard, bro. Like, I can't wait to drop this. Like, it's fucking phenomenal. And and um, I just produced a beat for him as well. Um, but yeah, flows. I got a lot of time. I got a lot of respect for him. Another artist that uh, we've interviewed him once before and he's actually coming to Adelaide for the first time. Here we time. go, here we go. My man, my man, my boy. Lil Sick, yeah? Man, one I've been waiting to talk about Lil Sick, bro. Like, fucking bro, it's been two hours, bro. Talk to me, brother. Talk to me. No. You know what I mean? Like, Lil Sick, like, dead ass, Lil Sick. So, I get it. Lil, Lil Sick's done some funny shit. Lil Sick's done this, this and that. Everybody misjudges him. You know what I mean? I know the questions you're gonna ask. Trust me, I know the questions you're gonna ask because I've been there. I asked him those questions myself. You know what I mean? But like, when I saw the talent in him, I'm like, ah, oh, cool. There's 25 million people in Australia, but there's billions of people in the world. Cool. Let's market you worldwide because you have the vocal capacity to do and be great worldwide. You know what I mean? Like, let's just 
you've done your funny shit. You've like we're gonna keep doing the funny shit. I'm not saying we're not stop. We're not stopping that shit because like trust me, we've got some funny songs, bro. Like you know, we got some sh- some shit there that's in the in the bag, bro. That's literally just like oh my god, like yes. <laughs> anyway, but like we're taking the game serious, and I was able to. I tap into a genre that I was never able to tap in before because I've never had an artist to work with to tap into that genre with. And that is like the weekend R&B trap, you know, like a real hard, like international, like worldwide fucking genre. You know what I mean? And um, uh, I've got I've got a lot. I've got about 200 artists under my, uh, under my belt. I've got I've got a lot of people to work with, but um I'm not saying no, no one's more talented than anyone or anything like that. I, I, I value all of them. I value all of yous. You all in your lane. You're all doing great and everything. But like with me and Lil Six just are tapping into some stuff. Like we've, we've been on, we were on talks to each other for about a year before we actually even met into what we were going to do. And like, oi. Our aim is to get Arias. Our aim is to take Australia international. It's not just to get like, you know, like, oh, let's make a record. No, 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 no. We, we're working on three albums, three separate albums, like uh, three different genres where I'm challenging myself and he's sitting there challenging me while I'm challenging him, right? And and it's something that I'll, I'll, never, for, I'll never forget, even though we're, we're, we're not even a quarter of the way of the process, you know what I mean? But um, it's, we're both challenging ourselves to push our boundaries in music towards those, those spots that are really going to hit. And, and, and I, I, there's only so much that I can say right now. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm biting my tongue with a lot of things right now. But... Let's just say that there's three albums coming. There's 50 songs. 50. There's at least 12 songs completely finished and put in place. Um, We still have about a year's worth of work. Um, And like I've shown you a couple of things and it's incredible what we're doing. But Lil Six, not just like he gets misjudged a lot by what he did. But what he did was great. He did what everyone else didn't. And he stood up there and he did what everyone else was fucking scared of. And you know what? I respect that. I value that. I cherish that. And I'll fucking stand there with him. You know what I mean? And I am proud to to uh, to sign Lil, uh, Lil Sick under me and co-sign with him on, on these three records. And we're... Try, we're like, uh, sorry, we're not trying. We're actually going to make history in Australia with these three albums that we're doing. And lastly, um, arguably, I guess the biggest Australian artist that you've worked with is 360. Whew. Whew. Yeah. Now, as someone who's had studio sessions with him, um, tell us a little bit about that relationship, how it, you know, how it evolved. He's great. He's great. Is is uh, is a very beautiful human being, like absolute beautiful human being. That when he stepped into my booth and he, we gave him a he. We did two features with Melbourne, and he um, he just wanted to try a couple of things in my booth. <laughs> He spat for six minutes straight. And we're just all sitting in the room like, what's going on? And I'm like stretching the beat, stretching the beat, stretching the beat. As he's still going and going and going and going. And I'm like, fuck, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? And I'm like stretching the beat, stretching and stretching, adding two more minutes, adding two more minutes, adding two more minutes. And then all of a sudden I'm just like, and then he's done. I'm just like, wow. And it's like, ah, cool. Let's pick what we got to do. And I'm like, like, bro, you literally just covered the entire hip-hop genre in six minutes. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. Um, it was... It, it, that was the music side of things. Um, second side of things, he's a dog person. I fucking love that. I have two dogs myself. But I fucking... I love dogs. 
Um, <laughs> and, and, and absolutely the most humble guy I've ever met. Um, you can just, as a musician, as an empath, as a, as a, as a person that goes by energies, like, he, he, he was nothing but good. And then, like, the records that you have worked on with him, yep. which are the ones that it's, I said, I think you said it's him and Melbourne. Yep. There's uh, two records with Melbourne coming. There's more, there's more than that. I, I can't speak about it. I can't. Uh, the, there's, uh, there's a thing that we call non-disclosure agreements, and I apologize for that, but um, I'm sorry I can't comment on it. Um, but those, those two joint set that you've got with, 60 in Melbourne. Is that the first time that you've worked with 60? Yes, it is. Um, we've been on the talks. He actually messaged me um, about a year ago asking me for a beat. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like 360 is asking me for a beat. So I sent him a couple of beats and he's like, yeah, they're, they're perfect. Excellent. And um, you sat on them from, from, from since. And, um, you know, he hasn't really dropped music in like, say, five years. So I know, I know what he's going through. I know his, his process. He's... he's Obviously, work trying to find out where, where he's going to return from, and um, obviously, like I said, I I'm not I can't really comment on it, and it's not really my place and all that blah blah blah. But um, the the comeback's coming, and 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 three sixty is coming back, and 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 he has our support. Artists that you haven't worked with yet. That you would love to work from Australia with. or international? From Australia, and why? I work with everybody. I work with everybody. Hilltop Hoods? No. Cursor? I'd love to work with Cursor. I worked with his brother, right? I love to work with Cursa. Um, Cursa and I are very uh, Cursa. Cursa does does a bit of trap, which is good. Like I, I reckon will will suit well. Um, Hilltop Hoods is a different genre. It's like very old school Aussie hip hop. Like I'm not saying I don't like him. Like I honestly, Hilltop Hoods was like my two go hip hop favorites when I was like 16. You know, in high school, in year 10, and you know. Um, Clown Prince and um, recapturing the vibe, you know what I mean? Not, not, not like those records really did it for me, you know what I mean? Like it was, it, 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 it sort of made me who I am today. So I'm not saying no, it's just more like um, I'm on a different generation and it's probably not going to suit the same genre. I, if the opportunity lands, fucking oath, I'd work. Do you really think I'm going to say no to three little boots? Come on, bro. But you know what I mean? Like, it's just a different genre. I'm, I'm going for, like, I'm trying to tap into, like, hey, let's get Young Thug into the studio. You know what I mean? Like, I, I really want to, like, you know, like, hey, let's get a little baby feature. Um, I think one of the names off camera that you said that you'd love to work with but you haven't yet is Complete. Complete. Um, yeah. Um... I respect Complete a lot. I, I love what he's done. Um, he's, uh, I've, I've met him, he's a good dude. Um, I know him by first name. Um, but that doesn't even fucking matter. Like, he's just a, he, I would love to be in a room with him. In, no, sorry, I've been in a room with him, like in the studio with him, it would be excellent. Um, again, different genre to what I do. I'm more trap orientated. He's more emotionally orientated, and um, I guess like grime, boom bap kind of orientated. Um, but um, yeah, he would he he he, he would be dope. Um, another one that comes to mind: Hooligan Hefs. Ah, um, you know, um, Hooligan's dope. Uh, Hoodrich Heffer. Uh, I know he's not one of the hooligans, but it's in the same category. He actually, we, we got some, we got some in the works right now. He actually, he spoke to me like last week. Uh, what was it? Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Hoodrich. The problem. There we go. The problem. When did we speak to me? Uh, 
we've been in the talks on Tuesday, 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 um, Tuesday, we lined up, uh, we've got some shit coming up, so Hoodridge, Hefa, you got to watch out for that, because we're actually going to put on a show, we're going to do a record, we're going to do a lot of big things, um, he's actually a good cunt, like, I fucking, I froth his energy, he was, he was nothing but polite, you know, like, there's a lot of cunts that literally hit you up, and like, oi, you know what I mean, like, fucking, let's get a record and fuck off, bro, like, he was actually, like, a sick cunt, like, he was actually a good cunt, and, um, we had, we had a good conversation, and, um, he, um, yeah, I can't wait to actually work with him, and arguably, the biggest name in rap at the moment, chilling it, Chilling it, been on stage with him, uh, toured with him. Uh, great dude. Um, would love to get a record with him. Um, one day, I guess. Um, like I said, um, last last time we were, uh, last time we toured Melbourne, it was with Forte. We were backstage at one of Danny's clubs. Um, I can't remember the name of the club. Uh, we we did some we did some shots of tequila or some shit. I don't know. I was fucked. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> let's go. Hey. Um, that was the first time I met Forte. Actually, like, um, I'd love to get a, I'd love to get a, a record with Forte. To be honest, um, Forte was one of one of a big influence in my life. Um, Alex Jones was there. Alex is a sick cunt. He's a, he's a good cunt. It was very quiet. Um, it was there was a lot of energy in that room. There was a lot of energy. So, like, I did my thing. Like, I usually just kick back and, like, analyze the room before I, before I do anything or say anything or whatever. You know what I mean? And, um, um, but, yeah, chill, chilling it, I'm not going to lie, bro. He's one of the best in the country. Like, he is, I mean, he, he, he's one of the best. I would love to get a record. With, like, no one can say no to that. Um, he's a good cunt. He's got good energy. Like I said, I, I've been on tour with him, which I just haven't had a chance to. The only time that I've been with him is, is in a room where everybody's loud, you know what I mean? I never really had to, the chance of a like face-to-face -face conversation with him or, you know, it'd be at, 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 our, uh, at our element, which is music. Um, it was more like, let's party motherfuckers. Um, and let's fucking pour water all over the crowd. You know what I mean? Like, cause that's what we do. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll shout out Chill on it. Um, shout out Little Snow, I miss you. I fucking miss you. I worked at Little Snow for a very long time. And um, he was one of the greatest people I ever worked with. I, w I, I wish Snow came back. The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.